Hey, True Believers England Teen here with another top 10 comics sold to readers. Man, uh, this is an exciting week. So what we're going to do here is we're going to count down the floppy copies, the comic books that are being sold to comic readers in the shops. And then we're going to go over to Comixology, world's largest digital comic book shop, to see who wins the week. Is it Marvel? Is it DC or independent comics? We don't know yet. And kind of excited to find out it's never the independence though now these uh are the comic shops that have participated this is from bleeding cold take it with a grain of salt if you need to if you're ever in the area here of any of these comic book shops stop by say hi maybe buy something and remember support your own local comic book shop now without further ado i invite you to kick back relax and let's get this party started Starting the countdown at number 10, The Walking Dead Deluxe. Walking Dead's in color and beginning our countdown. Coming in at number 9 is Champions, number 1. In the number 8 spot, we have Marauders, number 13. Coming in at number 7, we only find them when they're dead, number 2. Coming in at number 6 is Deceased Dead Planet, number 4. Coming in at number 5 is X-Force, number 13. At number 4 is Amazing Spider-Man, number 49. In the number 3 spot, we have Wolverine, number 8. And the runner-up coming in at 2nd place is Thor, number 8. And the number 1 floppy copy sold to readers this week is Batman, number 100. So, I can't say I'm surprised. Batman, number 100, taking the top spot. It's uh, It was popular, the Joke of War and all that kind of stuff. So we had Batman 100. We had Deceased Dead Planet number 4. And that's it for DC in the top 10 this week. Wow. They won last week or the last time we did this, right? So for Marvel, you had Thor, Wolverine, Amazing Spider-Man, X-Force, Marauders, and Champions. There you go. And then, uh, of course, you had The Walking Dead. We only find them when they're dead for independent comics. It is a sad day for a DC fan. That's all I've got to say. Famous Faces and Funnies. DC takes the top three spots in the FFF Weekly Top 10. But Marvel makes up half the list with three titles. ASM and Thor, Batman's Joker War finale, took the number one spot with Dead Planet and the three Jokers on its second week. Uh, following close behind, Thor is up there on our list as usual. Amazing Spider-Man is also a top ten regular, but it's lower on the list this week. Thanks to a larger than normal price tag. I get that this is a legacy anniversary, but having it immediately followed by a number 50 that is also priced higher than normal, though not as much, doesn't make me feel great. It's like Marvel forgot the hard lesson they learned with their slew of $10 Deadpools just a few years back. The X of Sword tie-ins got a few small bumps. Wolverine got the first appearance boost. That, uh, that sold a little higher than normal. X-Force and the Marauders have settled into pretty consistent sales patterns. They don't make the top 10 often, but thanks to a few cross-pulls with other X titles, titles uh, they worked their way to the bottom of the list this week. Walking Dead Color Debut was popular. Not a huge sell at our store. A few diehard fans bought multiple covers and will do so as long as they do multiple covers. I don't see them wrangling in many fan new fans anyway. There's a lot of people I know who are really getting tired of the $10 price tag. Not just at Marvel, but DC does occasionally put out a book or so that ends up being $7.99 or $10 or something. And I get it. Um, thanks for the double-sized issue. Why's it got to be $10? Oh, yeah, because a normal comic costs $5 nowadays. Uh, it's amazing, though, that they haven't priced out. I mean, obviously, they're saying it's slowed down, but... Goodness gracious, it was too much for me to pick up. Sailfish Comics says Batman number 100 and Amazing Spider-Man number 49 were neck and neck this week. And honestly, I bet that if circumstances surrounding the 49 numbering weren't so confusing to a lot of folks, Spidey would have easily taken the lead. The rest of the titles out this week made for healthy sales. With a, su a successful Champions relaunch, a new issue of Donny Cates' Hot Thor run, and Wolverine and X-Force, both exciting the spe speculator crowd, 
Also, it was great to see the old Walking Dead readers crawl back out of hibernation for the color reprints that began this week, joined by a handful of first-time readers. Couldn't quite pull the trigger on the Walking Dead thing. I get it, and hey, it's color, so that's kind of interesting. If I knew they were going to commit to the 193 issues, maybe I would get it, but if it's first seven... I don't care about that that much. Uh, I've got the omnibuses. I'm happy with that. I'll pass. Unless they commit. Dr. Knows Comics and Games Superstore says, DC takes first place in two more top ten slots further down the charts, one of which is a death metal tie-in. Marvel takes second place, though, fifth and seventh, with a great showing for champions number one. Boom takes sixth place with We Only Find Them When They're Dead and IDW takes 10th place with Transformers Back to the Future. This does not bode well for DC when the big bat events end. Unfortunately, I agree. Uh, Batman seems to be carrying the entire line, which I've got to wonder, what are you guys thinking if you're buying the X-Men and not Batman? I mean, even though the Joker War started a little bit convoluted, it's still a ton better than Hickman's X-Men. At Rodman Comics, they say Batman 100 was a clear winner this week. Alex Ross covers once again give a big boost to Marvel. Walking Dead Deluxe number one, even though it is a reprint, it manages to break into the top ten. Sold more copies of American Vampire 1976 number one than any of the previous American Vampire issues. Oddly enough, Justice League 54 sold out on a Wednesday, surprisingly. Not a bad week. American Vampire looked all right. I got to admit, I kind of got scared off of Justice League because that one run was so horribly bad. I think it was leading up to issue number 50. I didn't want to continue. I mean, it was that bad. It destroyed the title for me. I'm done with Justice League for the foreseeable future. Collector's Paradise in Pasadena, even with 3X of sword chapters, Batman 100, and 10 covers of Amazing Spider-Man 49, we had three indie books in the top 10 this week, with Boom's Amazing New, We Only Find Them When They Are Dead, number two, ranking pretty high, and selling more copies than most Marvel and DC books, and great debuts from Image, getting it together, and AWA, American Ronin. Selling a lot of copies, uh, we have been making an extra effort to promote great indie publishers like Boom and Awa, Vault, and a few others who offer great terms to retailers while producing excellent product, and it's starting to pay off for us. Stores need to stop their reliance on the big two, especially DC Comics, and we are all well on our way. Well... I'm enough of a fanboy of DC Comics not to want people to forget about them or whatever. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of good independent comic books out there to promote. You know, I've, I've been talking about Dead Days for a lot of time now, and I really recommend that. But there's a whole bunch. Bad Mother. Dude, get Bad Mother. It's an awesome title. There are a whole bunch of independent titles out there I think uh, a lot of people would enjoy. All right, so let's go on over to Comixology, world's largest digital comic book shop, and find out who wins the week. Marvel, DC, Independent, more likely it's Marvel, but you know what? We're going to do the countdown anyway. At number 10, we have The Amazing Spider-Man, number 49. Coming in at number 8 is Star Wars, number 7. At number 8 is Justice League, number 54. Coming in at number 7 is Thor, number 8. In the number six spot, we have Deceased, Hope at World's End. Coming in at number five is Deceased, Dead Planet, number four. At number four, we have Wolverine, number six. Yes, I did read it as eight. I apologize, it's six. Coming in at number three is X-Force, number 13. In the runner-up position at number two, we have The Marauders, number 13. And just like the floppy copies, number one for the week, the digital week, is Batman, number 100. Okay, ignore the lighting change, and let's pretend I'm recording this at the same time I recorded the rest of the video. Alrighty, so this is harsh right here, gang. Um, wow, as a DC fan, this is not my week. So we've got at least number one. We got the number one spot with Batman. But then, let's see, two, three, four, number five. Okay, so two in the top five, at least, with DC's Hope at the End of the World. That's the surprising part. It's not just uh, DC's Dead Planet. I guess maybe 
the people like myself who get the hard copies don't go and buy it on digital. Therefore, there's less people doing. But it does surprise me that the uh, chapter play is the one that got it. Uh, after that, we've got, uh, of course, DC's Dead Planet number four and then Justice League number 54. And that is it. Uh, also surprised at the uh, it, Amazing Spider-Man number 49 only making it to number 10. Once again, it must be because of the high price tag. Why is it $10 digitally? I have no idea. Anyway, let's sp stretch it out to the back 10, uh, to you know, to 11 through 20, and we're gonna see who wins the week. But you know what? Marvel owns that time and space. I guess I should say that owns that space anyway. And uh, I'm not, I'm not confident my team's gonna win. <laughs> All right, let's go along and check out the last half of the countdown. At number 11, we have Young Justice, number 19. It's now 6 to 5, still Marvel's favor. At number 12, we have the first independent comic show up, Die, number 14. It's still 6 to 5, Marvel's favor. At number 13, DC ties it up with Far Sector, number 8. It is now 6 to 6. Coming in at number 14, Spider-Man, number 19. Marvel makes sure that DC doesn't taste that sweet, sweet flavor of victory. It's 7 to 6, Marvel's favor. At number 15, we have Champions number 1. It's 8 to 6 in Marvel's favor. Number 16 is proving to be embarrassing. Black Widow number 2. It's now 9 to 6, Marvel's favor. Oh, come on. Number 17 is The Magnificent Ms. Marvel. You guys wanted The Magnificent Ms. Marvel over most of DC Comics that were released that week. This cannot be serious. It's now 10-6. to 6. Because of the die, there is no way DC's catching up. Marvel wins the week. At number 18, the second independent comic book shows up. We only find them when they're dead. Number 2, it is still 10-6 to 6 in Marvel's favor. Number 19, Lock and Key. Independent comics have three. DC still has six, Marvel 10. And at number 20, we got The American Vampire 1976. Okay, so at least DC makes another showing. It's a bit embarrassing. It's still 10 to 7. Still Marvel's favor with three independent comic books on the board. Well, there you go, guys. It was a pretty uh, pretty bad butt whipping this time around. That being said, um, no, there is no that being said. Well, like they had number one. What can you say? You know, the the number one comic is Batman. Um, not a Batman that we particularly liked. If you watch our review, uh, Batman 100 was a poor ending to the Joker War. We thought, but there you go. The back nine does usually belong to Marvel. I knew that. I was glad to actually to see three independent comic books, but take it away from Marvel, not DC. What's going on, guys? I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of sad to me. All righty, there you go, gang. That's the countdown. What do you think uh, people are buying too much of? Like Magnificent Ms. Marvel. Seriously. Uh, what do you think should be in the countdown like almost anything else, DC? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell if you haven't done it already, and click on one of the videos that are popping up around here. You may enjoy that. Uh, check it out. Um, like thank everybody who's already done that. To everyone, all the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.